Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Jessel Noor in Baltimore. The European Union has announced that starting in 2014, it's going to ban funding and cooperation with Israeli institutions based in the occupied territories. The move is being described as a political earthquake in Israel, and officials have said it threatens future peace talks. Now joining us to give us more details about this latest development is Shir Hever. He's an economist studying the Israeli occupation of the Palestinian territories for the Alternative Information Center, a joint Palestinian-Israeli organization dedicated to publishing alternative information and analysis. Thank you for joining us, Shir. Thank you for having me, Jason. So, Sheer, what's your reaction to this latest announcement? It's being greeted with anger uh, and skepticism in Israel. Well, if we only look at the um, uh, legal aspect of it, it actually doesn't seem so much of a, of a big story because the European laws have already said uh, long uh, in adv uh, long ago that uh, Europe should not encourage any kind of economic cooperation with Israel. Uh, the various uh, association agreements that the EU, uh, EU uh, signed with Israel don't apply to the occupied territory. So that's old news. And if you look at the actual document that was uh, published now by the EU, it talks about guidelines, not about uh, a commitment or enforcement of a, a restri a, a, which, which would restrict the ability of the member states of the EU to fund whoever they wish. So if we just look at the official level, it doesn't seem like much news. But actually, these are very big news, because um, what, what we see here is a, a sort of awakening of a, a, dis a debate that has been brewing in Europe for many years. Uh, where European officials are completely aware that they are actually uh, participating and funding the occupation to some extent. They're helping Israel continue the occupation. At some point, they're going to have to face consequences for this. They're going to have to take responsibility for this. Uh, one of the reasons that the uh, peace process has not been successful is that Israel w was not held accountable for crimes committed against Palestinians, and that Israel continued to get very good trade relations with Europe, with the United States, with many other countries, um, which allow Israel to do whatever they want uh, and uh, even to profit, for example, by exporting uh, agricultural produce that they produce inside the occupied territory. The reason that they're calling it an earthquake, though, is that uh, these uh, new guidelines that are published by the uh, EU are not just uh, talking about um, customs issues that have been debated for many years already regarding uh, agricultural products, for example, but now they're also talking about any kind of cooperation. And that also means in the field of culture, in the field of academia, that means that various grants and funds that go from the EU to various Israeli institutions to Israeli universities are going to be uh, restricted if those Israeli institutions are actually involved in the occupation in some way. Now, what everyone in Israel knows, maybe not everyone in Europe knows, but certainly the Israeli officials are well aware, well aware of it, is that almost every institution in Israel is very deeply connected to the occupation. Almost every university in Israel is deeply involved in illegal colonizing activity. Uh, almost uh, all the cultural uh, projects in Israel are being funded by uh, organizations that promote colonization, that uh, sustain colonization. Israel's uh, main theaters um, do shows in the occupied colonies, uh, in the colonies in the occupied territory. So this is what uh, uh, makes Israelis very concerned. Israelis uh, uh, realize that this is a direct continuation of the BDS program, the BDS, Boycott Divestment Sanctions Movement, that is calling to put pressure on Israel, uh, through economic pressure, cultural pressure, uh, and to make Israel accountable. And I think at this point, uh, it has convinced many European officials at least to understand that they just cannot uh, be party of that crime. So just as a sort of way to wash their hands of complicity with Israel's crimes, they're, going to, they're saying we're not going to uh, fund any of these projects that are involved in the occupation. Now, I'm, uh, I'm going to quote the Jerusalem Post here, but right-wing members of parliament have said, the EU decision is racist, we will build more settlements. What's your response? I think they're in panic. Uh, and Netanyahu called the press, con press conference and said that outside pressure will not uh, move Israel from its policy. We know from experience that it's exactly the opposite. Outside pressure has always been very effective uh, in uh, making Israel know the limits of its power. 
And at this point, uh, the right wing uh, government, uh, right, right wing members of the government are talking about a uh, retaliation. They're using very violent rhetoric. They're talking about punishing Palestinians for uh, uh, what the EU is doing. Um, and for example, the, the industrial union of Israel uh, said that uh, because uh, um, the uh, sanctions are, which are going to be imposed by the EU, uh, they are going to make Palestinian workers suffer uh, for the EU policy. Uh, Israel's minister of the economy, um, um, Bennett, uh, from the extreme right wing uh, Jewish Home Party, uh, said just a week ago, uh, after, uh, after he came back from a trip in China, that the world is not very interested in the occupation. Israel can basically do whatever they want, and uh, people are more interested in things like technology and trade. Uh, so Israel shouldn't really be concerned about pursuing the, the peace process. Uh, and now he's uh, uh, speaking a completely different tune. Now he's saying uh, that uh, the, this co uh, um, he called the EU decision uh, an, a terror attack against uh, the peace process. Uh, which, which is quite amazing, considering the fact that the Israel's right to colonize the occupied territory seems, to, according to his logic, uh, to be a, a requirement for the peace process, uh, which means, of course, that he has no interest in the peace process. But what I think is more interesting is not what we hear from the extreme right members of the parliament and, and government, because this is quite expected. There's no news there. But what we see from the so-called left or center part of the uh, government, uh, the head of the opposition, uh, and uh, the, the minister of finance. Uh, the uh, the, uh, uh, there's also a member of parliament in charge of the of the peace process, and they're uh, saying something that we haven't heard before very uh, frequently in, in high levels of uh, in high echelons of the Israeli government. They are saying that uh, this move by the EU proves that uh, the, the negotiations have been stalled for too long, that the right-wing uh, policies are, are driving Israel, uh, Israel uh, um, over, over the cliff uh, and into the abyss, and that uh, there's no time to lose. Israel has to do something. And that's quite interesting because when they're trying to make political profit from uh, basically sanctions imposed against Israel by the international community, they are then associating themselves with the people who say that sanctions against Israel have merit. They can work and they're positive. Uh, and this is not something that, that's very close to the mainstream in Israel. And, and we're seeing a very big shift now. I think this is cause for, for some optimism that people in Israel are realizing that they just can't go on uh, colonizing and uh, occupying um, without borders uh, as long as they want. Uh, there are, at some point, some consequences. Now, Shir, isn't it important to remember that the majority of settlement expansion has happened under left-wing governments in Israel? You're absolutely right. Uh, and uh, actually, one of the things that um, uh, we see in the Israeli government is that um, so-called right-wing governments in Israel don't need to prove that they hate Arabs, that they hate Palestinians so much. They, their policies can be a bit more uh, thought, uh, 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 well thought through and, and cautious. Um, and the parties that are conceived within the Israeli uh, political sphere as uh, so-called left or center parties, um, they would not be considered left in any other country. Uh, that, that should be clear. Uh, clear. But in, within Israel, uh, these parties are considered left. They need to constantly prove that they're uh, strong enough, that they're tough on, uh, on the Palestinians. Uh, so we did see that the most vicious wars and attacks, the assassinations uh, policy that Israel is using uh, without trial against Palestinians, uh, the war and uh, the invasion of Gaza of 2008-2009 in which 1,400 Palestinians were killed, uh, these were policies of so-called centrist or leftist government. While Netanyahu, which is a very uh, right-wing uh, uh, prime minister associated with very extreme right uh, movements in Israel, uh, he can afford to, to make some compromise. He's not going to lose the right uh, vote, uh, the right-wing vote. Uh, so, and, and that gives him a bit more uh, flexibility. I think uh, if we look at South Africa, for example, uh, when apartheid collapsed, it was the clerk, which was a right-wing uh, prime minister opposed to the dismantling of, of apartheid opposed to human rights uh, of, of uh, the black population who eventually uh, succumbed to the pressure and agreed to hold a general election.
Sheer Hever, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Jason. And thank you for joining us on the Real News Network.